So hi everyone, uh, my name's Jamal. Thank you so much for coming to listen to me speak today. Um, I'll be talking about a study I carried out with the Data Science Institute at Imperial College London. Um, I worked alongside Dr. Cesar Quilidrin Casas and Dr. Rosella Arcucci, and we looked at simulating realistic fluid flow by constructing a machine learning algorithm that could be utilised in real-time forecasting of urban air pollution. The final architecture I'll present here is called LatentGAN. So in terms of motivation, we'll begin by looking at MAGIC. So MAGIC stands for Managing Air for Green Inner Cities. It's a project that looks at combining natural and mechanical solutions to attempt to reduce air pollution in urban cities. One of their areas of research is to look at the positioning of buildings within a city and looks to see how best to place them to maximise flow such that pollutant particles are naturally flushed out. Air pollution has tremendous implications for things such as human health, which is why projects like MAGIC are so important. MAGIC uses fluid simulations to view flow patterns around cities. But generating fluid simulations with current techniques is difficult. For only a few buildings, the fluid simulations required for this are extremely difficult and computationally costly to generate. We can see that by extending this to a city-wide scale, it would be virtually impossible. By having a generative model that is capable of predicting tracer flows in real time, we can see that we essentially eliminate these issues. Generalising to the wider field of computational fluid dynamics, shown on screen are the Navier-Stokes equations. These are a combination of Newton's second law with conservation of mass and has been applied to fluid bodies. In their most general form, they are displayed as these two equations. We've got the continuity equation and also the momentum equation. Historically, velocity fields and turbulent flows have been extremely difficult to solve. As we can see from the Navier-Stokes equations, the non-dimensionality of the problem leads to a complex solutions that are far too difficult to solve analytically. Current solutions require heavy constraints to be made, such as reducing the problem down to two dimensions or assuming steady flow. In fact, one of the Millennium Prizes is actually involved proving or disproving the existence of a solution in three-dimensional space. Um, as a wider aim of the project, we wanted to explore training models that could be used to attempt to generate velocity fields in real time. So for the objectives, um, the key aims of this project were to construct a neural network architecture that could be utilised in real-time forecasting of fluid flow to predict the proceeding time step of a given input. More specifically, looking at applying a combination of a convolutional autoencoder and a generative adversarial network to this domain. The autoencoder focuses on dimensionality reduction whilst the GAN looks at generating outputs. The ability to simulate flow traces around an urban city such that it can be applicable to projects such as MAGIC. And finally, to be able to train a model capable of simulating velocity field flows. So to summarise our contributions, we present a novel latent GAN architecture that combines a convolutional autoencoder with a generative adversarial network to produce a generative model that is capable of predicting fluid flow. Um, it's worth mentioning that the architecture designed has actually been designed to be generalizable such that it can be applied to other dynamical systems. We demonstrate the ability to include, encode fluid data on unstructured meshes down to a latent space with several orders of reduction through the autoencoder, an architecture that is typically used on data sets that are structured and that lack physical meaning, such as images. As the latent spaces have retained important physical features of the given domain, they can then be used for further applications where reduced order models are favoured. For this study, they were passed to a generator model. And finally, we present a surrogate encoder and generator pair that is capable of producing tracer flows and also velocity fields um, at the proceeding time step in real time, providing benefits for work such as magic and you know, has potential for the wider field of computational fluid dynamics. So to view the data set very briefly, um, this was provided by the Data Science Institute at Imperial. Um, and yeah, it models flow around Elephant and Castle um, as shown in the screenshots. So we'll very quickly look at some of the challenges present um, during this project. Um, the most significant challenge was that of stability. Um, as we'll see in a few slides from now, um, GANs are very, very difficult to get to converge. This is because there are two competing models training at the same time in an adversarial fashion, as one improves, the other degrades and vice versa. The latent GAN architecture attempts to introduce a third encoder model into the mix, further complicating the issue. So instead of two models, we now have three. Um, another issue was in regards to the autoencoder architecture. We'll look at these more in a second, um, but essentially autoencoders are generally used on structured data sets such as images. The data set used here comprised of data using unstructured meshes. We see that there are smaller and more frequent meshes in the centre with fewer but larger meshes around the edges. This is because the area of interest is in the centre where the trace of sources have been placed as well as its interactions with the buildings. This is something we'll need to bear in mind when training. And lastly, the use of convolutional layers. Let's quickly look at what convolution is. So a convolutional neural network is a neural network with at least one convolutional layer. 
The convolutional layer looks at a small window of the data and applies convolution to it. We can see the definition of that here. This window is then moved across the input in order to generate output in a different dimension, resulting in, um, in this case, a downsample. So to summarize, convolutional layers look at regions of the data to perform feature learning. So the data set used in this study stored the attributes as one dimensional arrays as opposed to three dimensional ones that we would typically expect for such a domain. This was because of the unstructured meshes used. This means that neighboring data points in the array may not be neighboring in the domain. And so features learned during training may not actually appear correctly when translated back. So we'll now look at some preliminary concepts. Um, we'll begin with the autoencoder. So autoencoders generally take in an input with high dimensionality, um, as is the case for our fluids data. Um, these will then be passed through a series of layers collectively referred to as the encoder down to a bottleneck layer. This bottleneck layer is responsible for extracting the most important features of the data set. The encoded information is commonly referred to as the latent space. In terms of training, a series of layers referred to as the decoder will attempt to regenerate the data back to its original form before applying a piecewise error such as the mean squared error. Um, autoencoders are very, very useful for dimensionality reduction and extracting important features from a data set. Now looking at generative adversarial networks or GANs. Um, so the architecture was originally proposed by Ian Goodfellow in 2014. Um, it comprises of two architectures. We have the generator, which aims to generate a data sample that is as close as possible to the original data set, and the discriminator, which aims to distinguish between real data and a generated one. A typical training process is as follows. So we'll begin with random noise in, as input to the generator. This will attempt to generate a fake sample. We feed in random noise to be able to generate a wide range of outputs. Once this is done, we take the fake samples along with the real samples and use these to train the discriminator. The discriminator output class outputs a classification value between 0 and 1, where 1 represents a classification of real and 0 as fake. From here, losses are calculated. The discriminator is rewarded for correct classifications, but the generator is rewarded for incorrect ones. Um, we can start to see the adversarial nature of the name here. So looking at some of the loss functions, um, so we'll begin with the discriminator loss. Uh, the first term here refers to the log likelihood of the discriminator classifying real data as real. And this second term here refers to the log likelihood of the discriminator classifying fake data as fake. Um, we see that these are in fact actually binary cross entropy losses. Um, and yeah, the discriminator wants to maximize these values. Um, in terms of the generator, um, we actually want to do the opposite of this. And so we minimize this value. However, we know that the first term is never actually passed through the generator, and so it's always zero, so we can just ignore that. Um, but yeah, it's, it's worth noting that, um, as expressed by Goodfellow, um, early on in the learning process, when the generator's performance is poor, the discriminator can reject samples with high confidence because it's, it's quite easy to spot the differences. Um, therefore, this loss function begins to saturate um, and convergence can fail. Um, we therefore opt to use the inverse of this, which is shown to be a lot more stable. So yeah, we just flip everything and we're left with this. So now we'll look at some related works. Um, so we'll begin by looking at the Deep Convolutional Generative Adversarial Network, uh, or DCGAN for short. Um, this is the standard GAN architecture, but uses convolutional layers. Um, we see applications of, the, of this being used to generate realistic images of bedrooms. Uh, moving on to another paper, um, which looks at combining a variational autoencoder with a GAN. Um, variational autoencoders are ones that um, where the encoder returns a distribution over the latent space instead of a single point. Um, we know that in the architecture, the, the decoder and generator are collapsed into one. Um, and yeah, as shown, the architecture is capable of learning important features through the encoder um, and then generating random faces using the generator. Um, another paper of interest is the SDGAN. So this is used to reconstruct original faces from occluded inputs. Um, this architecture is particularly of interest because they incorporate a piecewise error named um, structural loss in the diagram that restricts the generator to output a very specific type of output rather than one that's just similar to the training data set. Um, this is useful to us because um, we don't want our generator to output a random time step. We want it to specifically output the preceding one. And finally, looking at the deep fluids paper, um, they demonstrate that um, using a combination of an autoencoder along with a generative model um, that they're able to predict fluid flows. Um, in this paper, they also demonstrate using the stream function as a physics-induced loss to produce more accurate flows. Um, we see interpolated outputs that are very similar to the training data, um, and we see that they're able to extrapolate plausibly to around 10% additional samples compared to the training set. 
So now we'll look at the actual latent GAN architecture. Um, so displayed is a high level overview of the architecture. Um, I will now walk you through the training process. So we begin with input at time t. This is encoded down to a reduced latent space through the encoded architecture. This latent space representation of the input is then passed through the generator, which outputs a prediction that is of the same size as the input. From here, a piecewise encoder loss is cal calculated as well as one for the generator using data that is at time t plus one. The generator output is passed through the discriminator, which attempts to classify its inputs as real or fake, and then outputs its losses. So we'll look at some problems with this architecture. So there are two key problems. Um, firstly, there was extreme instability. We struggled to get any of the models to converge, um, and we noticed the mean squared errors were not decreasing, and it just meant that the networks were not learning. Um, a second less obvious issue was that um, an unintuitive latent space was being generated. Um, from this diagram, you can see, um, so blue represents time um, t and red represents time t plus one. Um, we can see that the latent space becomes a strange cross between the two. This may not have been an issue for the very for this very specific task we're trying to solve here, but um, um, yeah, namely generating predictions at the proceeding time step. Um, but if we wanted to use the encoder as a standalone model for future work, this wouldn't be particularly useful. Um, we can see that if we encode and, with, and decode with respect to t instead, um, that the latent space becomes more meaningful. Therefore, we opted to train the autoencoder architecture separately. Once the encoder was trained, it could then be plugged back, in, back into the original latent GAN architecture as a pre-trained model. So in terms of the loss functions used, um, the autoencoder used a standard mean squared error to check its performance. Um, we know that the AE here refers to a forward pass through the encoder followed by the decoder. The discriminator uses the standard binary cross-entropy loss as per um, normal GAN. Um, we know that the latent space is fed into the generator as opposed to random noise. Uh, finally, we see the generator, which actually comprises of two components. So firstly, the standard binary cross-entropy loss from the GAN model. And again, the latent space here is fed in as input instead of random noise. Um, but then also there is a mean squared error loss term. Um, we know that the mean squared error is calculated against real data at time t plus 1 as opposed to time t for the autoencoder. So in terms of the final architectures, uh, I'm just going to discuss in general um, the architectures and I'll display the results in the background. So as a base, the standard architectures from DCGAN were used here. Um, this involves a series of convolutional layers for the discriminator and convolutional transpose layers for the generator, followed by a series of ReLU or leaky ReLU um, and batch norm activation functions. The encoder model was made to follow a similar structure to the discriminator, only it reduces to a latent space instead of a probability. Um, and the decoder was just a, a copy of the generator. A series of, of experimentations were carried out, looking at the effects of applying different layers, latent space sizes, optimizers, and so on. Um, we found the best performing ones to be the following. So we used Adam for the uh, the Adam optimizer for the autoencoder, Nadam for the generator, and stochastic gradient descent for the discriminator. The models were all trained for a thousand epochs, um, taking around 24 hours for the autoencoder and 27 hours for the GAN, um, and we saved every 200 epochs. And then from from this, the, the best models were selected. Um, the metrics used to ensure that a model was working as expected were the following. Firstly, whether a stable model had been trained. Um, this was determined by checking the losses calculated and ensuring some level of convergence had been achieved. Whether a low mean squared error was achieved. In this context, low uh, means, so orders of, let's say, 10 to the minus 5, minus 6 for traces and 10 to the minus 3, minus 4 for velocity fields. And then finally, whether the reconstructions or predictions were visually similar to the ground truth. Now, now whilst this isn't the most vigorous metric, um, it was done to ensure that meaningful outputs were being generated and not just ones that were tricking the network to produce low, uh, low errors. So now looking at some of the results. So the tracer autoencoder was trained for 600 epochs, um, reducing the dimensionality down to 256. Um, from 100,040, um, whilst achieving an average mean squared error loss of 7.68 times 10 to the minus 7. Um, showcased here are a forward pass through the encoder and decoder. Um, we see that for t equals 200 and 601, um, that the flow reconstructions are very similar to the ground truth. Uh, we do know, however, for t equals 5, the intensities are slightly off and there are artifacts that, that do appear. Um, it's worth noting, however, um, that in terms of the training set, the first 50 time steps um, have flows that are rapidly changing as the system has just begun. 
Um, after around time step 50, the flow becomes a lot more stable. So it's understandable um, why the model performs worse for the first 50 time steps, um, you know, as, it's, as they are less representative of the entire data set. Um, the final time step used to train the tracer model was time step 988. So we demonstrate here that the architectures are actually generalizable and it has learned meaningful physical features. Moving on to the latent GAN predictions for tracers. Um, so the final GAN was, was trained for 400 epochs, achieving an average mean squared error loss of 7.14 times 10 to the minus 6. Um, here we showcase interpolated predictions where the final two time steps have been used to train the model, but the first one has not. Um, we note that the flow shapes as well as intensities are generally quite good. Um, we, no we do notice that the flows do appear to be a lot more patchy and contain more artifacts. Um, we believe you know, this has been caused by the convolutional layers learning regional features in the data that's not actually present in the real domain. But also errors um, present in the encoder are being propagated through back, uh, uh, the generator network. Um, again, we demonstrate generalizability as it performs well for time steps uh, 1500 and 3000. Um, and yeah, this shows that the encoder and generator have actually learned meaningful physical information about the data set. And shown here is the evolution of the mean squared error across uh, time for both models. So moving on, we now look at the velocity-filled um, autoencoder reconstructions. So the final model was trained for 1,000 epochs, um, reducing the dimensionality down to 512 from 100,040, um, achieving an average mean squared error loss of 1.49 times 10 to the minus 2. We notice the immediate degradation, um, but this is understandable as the domain is far more complex with flows being circulated around the entire region and not just the centre as per the traces. We see that the, that, that the model was able to perform quite well across time steps. Um, and here we see that so the final time step uh, used to train the for velocity field was t equals 900. So we, again, we should, we've shown that this is generalizable. And moving on to the latent GAN predictions for velocity fields. Um, so again, the final model was trained for 1,000 epochs and achieved an average mean squared error loss of 2.31 times 10 to the minus 2. Um, we notice a, a, a similar patterns as per the traces where flows near the start performed a lot worse than flows down the line. Um, but we see, we see that we do get meaningful results. Um, again, we show this to be generalizable um, for unseen data. Um, yeah. So in terms of performance, um, the time taken to generate an actual time step where we solve the real physical equations took around 172 seconds. Um, comparing this with the time taken to generate a prediction, it took only 1.1 and 1.3 seconds for the traces and velocity fields respectively. Um, so unfortunately, we weren't able to reproduce on the exact same hardware, but I think the i7 has around a 15% better single core performance. Um, but still, we see the results are, are displayed are vastly different. Um, and then running on a GPU, um, I was able to achieve speeds of, so we got 0 0.25 and 0 0.3 seconds for, for traces and velocity fields respectively. So now looking at potential future works. Um, so in terms of limitations of our model, um, we believe that the main issue lies with the use of unstructured meshes along with convolutional layers interactions with the one dimensional data arrays. Um, we could begin by converting to a structured mesh. Um, this would involve calculating interpolated values for the new structured mesh edges. Um, from this, we could then actually convert the data arrays into a three-dimensional format. Um, performing these two things gives us two main benefits. Um, firstly, it means um, you know, the convolutional layers can take full advantage of regional feature learning. Um, and secondly, this um, then allows us to implement a physics-based loss. Um, for example, we could use the stream function. Um, in terms of the latent GAN architecture itself, it would be very nice to achieve convergence with all three models trained in a single cycle. As the main problem was with stability, there is a proposed Wasserstein GAD model which um, seeks to reduce this. So in this, in, in this model, the discriminator now no longer classifies between real and fake with a probability, but rather any real value output. And, and the general aim is to output a higher number for real samples and lower numbers uh, for, for fake samples. And yeah, Wasserstein GANs are uh, less likely to suffer from issues such as vanishing gradient problem um, and, you know, are, are more robust. So this brings me to the end of the presentation. Um, I'd like to thank you all for listening. Um, yeah, I, I hope you enjoyed this. And uh, if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to drop me an email. Um, I've, I've got that here. Um, and yeah, I'd be more than happy to answer them. And yeah, thanks again.